healing energies from individual colors. Now I'm going to talk about all the individual colors um, and the properties of those and how they tie in with um, healing physical body emotions and consciousness. So how can we use individual color energies in our surroundings, clothing, artwork, etc., to bring ourselves into balance physically, emotionally, and spiritually? So if you, if you came in and you were handed um, a sheet of paper by Roberta and you got to do the little ac exercise by actually looking at the colors and kind of being able to tune in with yourself and seeing which ones you are responding to, then you can kind of pull those out now and reference them as we're going through the, the individual colors. Um, and again, we're colored light nutrients convert to coherent biophotons for healthy bodies. So again, you see this slide. Now we're going to be talking about um, bringing these individual colors in for healing purposes and for balancing. So we all have coherent biophoton emissions. Um, OK, how do colors influence us every day? Um, what I'm going to show you is that science, five elements, um, and the chakra system, which I'll explain here in a little bit, uh, tell us the same thing. Sorry, I got a little ahead of, ahead of myself. Um, color balances our emotions and heals our physical bodies. So like you saw in the exercise, we're naturally drawn to colors in artwork and other items whose color frequencies we need more of and which co correlate with our energy deficiencies. And again, this is POP saying this as well as a number of color therapy based um, healing modalities. Um, and if you, if you don't have this um, the sheet of paper or if you didn't get a chance to do it or you lose it, you can always go back and revisit my website, the Color Healing and Art section, and that same exercise is on there. And um, you can actually use the images on my website as your kind of study to see which ones you're resonating with. Um, Pop, Chopra, and ancient traditions say our different organs resonate at different optimal frequencies which correspond to different colors. Um, again, and when organ systems get out of balance, they need specific color frequencies to get them back into balance, to be able mm -hmm. to communicate effectively. Our cells, different organ systems actually need these different frequencies to be able to talk to each other. Um, when, with the illness, an organ's frequency or strength will change. Um, when certain colors are absorbed through the eyes or shone on or around the body, though, these organs and cell cellular structures absorb the energy they need to come back into balance. And again, he's uh, validated a lot of this. He's still doing a lot more research. And we know from ancient healing traditions and lots of modern color therapy traditions that these actually do work. So science is kind of catching up now. According to five elements, th these different organ systems also correspond to different emotions. And I'll talk about that as well when I go into the individual colors. Um, we can use color to direct the appropriate energy to those areas of our body and aspects of our psyche which need healing. And the great thing is you don't even have to know which organ system needs what. You just have to look at, okay, I'm feeling like I need to be around some red, so be around some red. And it, your body will take care of the rest. <laughs> it's, it's kind of pretty smart that way. <clears throat> okay, so how are individual colors like individual vitamins? I kind of made this analogy to make it easy for people to understand. Um, so let's say you take a multivitamin every day, which many of us do, um, and you feel a cold coming on. We know from science and we know from our own experience and we know from way back when when they used to just give you orange juice that if you get an extra dose of vitamin C, that's going to help get over your cold a lot more quickly. So you don't necessarily take 10 multivitamins, but you might take 1,000 milligrams of, <coughs> of just vitamin C. So it's very similar with color therapy. Um, when we have white sunlight from the sun, we're getting all of these colors. So sometimes we ju maybe we just need some more you know, red or blue or you know, green, whatever color we need. Um, so we don't have to like spend a whole bunch of extra time in the sun. We can get specific colors of you know, exposure to one color. You, know, you can look at some artwork. You can be in your house. And if you have a blue wall, you can stare at that. You can, you can wear blue clothing. You can, I mean, there are all kinds of things that you can do. There are also LED devices, which are used for um, very specific treatments, which I'll talk about later. Um, and here again, you see with the blue light for jaundice, um, they stick the baby in blue light, and that gets the jaundice, you know, healed very quickly. But 
you can also stick your baby in the sun and it works just as well. It just takes a little bit longer, but sure don't get a big hospital <coughs> bill that way. <laughs> so, like, free. I wonder why we haven't heard a lot about this. Hmm. Um, individual colors of the chakras. So a lot of you have probably heard of the chakra system. If you haven't, um, I'm just going to give a really brief overview of this. Uh, we have these different um, major energy centers. There are a number of energy centers, but we have seven major energy centers of distribution, energy distribution through our body, each with its own color, it, with its own color frequency. So you've got red, first, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And looky here, exactly the same as the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Um, so all, in all of these colors correlate with different physical, emotional, and spiritual energies that are in our bodies. It's a very simplified version. And five elements also has color correspondences. There are 12 energy channels, they're called meridians, that run through our bodies, which you saw in that biophoton image. You saw a few different of them. And they correspond to different colors. So we've got red, um, orange, yellow, white, which is all the colors, blue, and green. And each element is responsible for different energies, physical organ systems corresponding to um, emotional and spiritual aspects as well, just like the chakras. So this is a really simple analogy of how you can think about the chakras and the, the meridians. So here's a house, and you've got energy coming in through the transformer. So you can think of the, the chakras as energy transformers, and they bring the color in life energy into our bodies. This is our body here, like the power coming into a house. The meridians are just like the electrical wiring. So they're, they're distributing this power that's coming in. And they're taking, okay, I want to put some up here, I want to go to the attic, I want it to go to the living room, I want it to go, you know, to my legs, my arms, and my, my liver, and my gallbladder, and my, <laughs> so. And then the acupuncture points are just like the little electrical outlets that you plug into, and that's where you can access the power. So it's the same thing. Points in your body are where the energy comes to the surface, so you can, you can access the, that actual meridian just by where it comes to the surface and sticking needles in or just using finger pressure. Um, so again, when I mentioned this earlier that in um, Shiatsu, it's actually part of the diagnostic. There are very few questions that we ask. In Shiatsu, it's all about reading the person's body. So we read the hara, which is this area of the body, c which corresponds to all the organs um, and the energies in the body. And we ask a few questions. What's your favorite color? What's your, what's the favorite color for your clothing? Well, I've kind of fine-tuned this. In general, you talk about what your favorite cl color is, but I, I found that there's a difference because some people, you know, I love, I love red, and I love having red in my home. I love being around red. I love painting with red. I don't wear a lot of red because it's a very attention-getting color, and it's a, it's, it, you don't always want to call attention to yourself or um, anything like that. Or you, you, some people just don't look good in certain colors, so they might want to have it in their home. Um, anyway, so what's your favorite color for your clothing? What's your favorite color for your home environment? Because they might be different. Um, and this also tells me about how they want to appear in the world as well. Um, is there any particular color you've been feeling drawn to lately? So all of this, as soon as they tell, give me this information, I can immediately go, oh, okay, I'm going to look for an imbalance in this particular system because they're feeling drawn to this color. So how individual color frequencies get us back in tune? Um, and again, we see the chakras here. And now I'm going to go through one at a time. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Uh, red, stimulating. It's a stimulating color. It's all about survival, joy, and passion. Um, it's an attention-getting color. It's where the eye looks first. There's a reason that the stop, don't go any further, halt, <laughs> is red as opposed to the yellow or green or being inverted or green being stopped. Um, red is physically energizing and stimulating. You can see all these signs over here, warning signs. Um, studies since 1942, there have been a number of these. They found that simply looking at the color red um, triggers the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight response. It speeds up heart rate. It increases blood circulation. And all of the things like caffeine, cigarettes, cocaine, amphetamines all do the same thing. They stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. So basically, if, if you don't want an extra cup of coffee, you can just stare at some red if you're feeling lethargic. <laughs> you're going to get the same effect without the caffeine. Um, 
it encourages movement, fast responses. I mean, anytime you need to pay attention and respond very quickly, um, you know, stop, here, uh, they will use red. It stimulates the sensory nervous system and it energizes the senses. So taste, smell, sight, hearing, and touch are all um, much more in tune when you're around red. And um, a correlation is, that we see from the chakra system and the, um, fi the ele five elements, the first chakra is all about survival. Red enhances courage and self-confidence. So any of these type of situations that are warnings, I mean, basically, it's like you, you have to pay attention because otherwise you, this is threatening your life. Um, uh, fire element, which is the color red and corresponds to the heart, is about energy and movement. So all of these, again, fast response, you know, pay attention, fight or flight. So what does the fast food industry know about how color influences us? They must know something because they all use red in their <coughs> logos. And yellow, red and yellow. Some of them just use red, but for the most part, they're red and yellow. And every once in a while, you get a little splash of blue. Um, uh, anyway, red acts you, makes you act quickly, make decisions quickly, eat quickly. Make the f it makes the food taste better because all your senses are more highly tuned. And since it's a joy-inducing color, it makes you enjoy the experience. So when we get to yellow, you'll see why they use yellow. Red in the psychology of sex. There's somebody that's actually doing research on this. Um, in 2008, this Dr. Andrew Elliott from the psychology department at the University of Rochester in New York, uh, he found that when he showed um, men images of women wearing different colors, including red, um, that, and even if, like it, this kind of example here, he'd have different images with the same woman that would come up, and one time she'd be wearing a green dress, well, what color is that? It actually is more like taupe. Um, one time she'd be wearing a red, I, but he's got these all interspersed. And um, same pose, same woman's face, everything. The only difference is that sometimes they're wearing different colors. And he found consistently that men find women sexier if they're wearing red rather than blue or green, say. Not just blue or green, but just as an example. Men were more likely to say they wanted to have sex with a woman and would be willing to spend more on a date if she were wearing red. So, <laughs> and from the chakra in the uh, five element system, we see again. So red is about survival and procreation. Again, it's all about propagating the species. species. So, it, okay, how do you do that? <laughs> By having sex, but. Um, so, and the fire element, red, red in the heart is energizing and stimulating again. And it gets your blood flowing. Um, okay, anyway. He did, he did another study more recently in 2010, and he found that red is affecting women the same way, or similarly, it affects them. Um, and again, both all of these studies have been done with different people around the world, so it's not a cultural influence, it's actual human, actually a human response. He found that women in China, the US, England, and Germany found that men pictured wearing red or surrounded by red were more sexually attractive. Women consider men in red as higher in status and more likely to climb the social ladder. Very specific responses they're getting. Um, and what we see in nature is that alpha males and primates, when they're the actual alpha male, they have a lot more red on their bodies and their faces. They have more red skin than the non-alphas. Um, and again, here we have first chakra. It's about survival, security, basic needs. Again, anything that has to do with your survival and being able to you know, uh, raise your children. So for women, it's about security and getting enough money and home and shelter. And so that's why they relate it in that sense that um, men in red are higher, considered to be higher in status and to climb the social ladder. They seem like they're better, better providers because of the fact that they're, only because of the fact that they're wearing red, again. You know, this guy and this guy are identical, but they pick this one. Um, red summary, stimulating and energizing. It's a very stimulating, energizing color, which a lot of us already know, but being around red um, increases alertness, conversation, optimism, passion, joyfulness, laughter, and excitement. Uh, stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and the sensory nervous system. It enhances the senses, the touch, taste, smell, sight, hearing. 
uh, stimulates the survival mechanism, fight or flight, procreation, security, money, home, basic needs, enhances courage and self-confidence. So if you wear red, it will intimidate your opponents if you have an important board meeting. Um, heart is the basis for all physical functions in the body. So again, it's kind of like this core uh, root chakra survival, very, very physical energy. Um, now we see some examples of red light used in everyday healing. And um, I don't know if any of you have come across these, but they're, they're becoming pretty common now. And research goes back many years. NASA and many other people have been doing re um, research on red light LED devices. Um, they find that for all of these different applications, 660 nanometers seems to be the optimal frequency or wavelength. Um, they use it for cellular regeneration in arthritis. So you can get devices that are strap on and you can treat your arthritis. Um, they use it for collagen stimulation, um, like here. At home devices, you can go to a spa and get a collagen treatment using just red light. Um, accelerated wound healing. Um, they, in 2001, NASA did a study on Navy SEALs testing the, the speed of recovery um, from wounds using red light only. In 2011, they're doing a more recent study um, treating mouth ulcers in, the, in cancer patients that they get mouth ulcers from the chemotherapy. Um, and it's also used for hair regrowth. Same, um, same frequency or same wavelength. Um, so we see that not only is red a physically or an energizing color emotionally um, and physically gets our blood flowing, it actually is also stimulating us on a ce cellular level to um, generate cells, new cells. Here we're seeing, this is um, a device that um, is, oops, sorry. I've got to get my pointer thing down here. <laughs> uh, device, a, a helmet that um, was developed for, um, Alzheim for treating Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia. And it's these guys in the UK, Dr. Gordon Dougal and his team, um, they actually found that this particular frequency of near-infrared light, so it's out of the visible spectrum, it's 1,072 nanometers, is very effective for treating cold sores and will actually prevent a cold sore from ever coming out. And it's this little tiny device and you just use it on your cold sore when you feel it starting to come on or even after it's already started. And um, the UK actually pays for it with the socialized medicine. If you, you can go to your doctor and you get one of these for free. Um, and uh, it stimulates the immune response and cellular regeneration in cold sores. So in 2008, the developers realized that there are probably other applications for the same frequency of light because it can penetrate very deeply, um, whereas visible red light only can penetrate um, up, to, up to a couple centimeters deep. So you can't go that, you can't go that far. Um, it, so you need to go into the near-infrared frequency because longer wavelengths can penetrate more deeply. Um, and so they developed this helmet, which you see in this picture here, and they're using it uh, with very, very positive reports um, of reversing Alzheimer's symptoms and Parkinson's and dementia. And they're, they're working on getting some more rigorous um, scientific studies lined up, but you can, you can actually see, their, see on their website. This is a pretty famous sci-fi author in the UK. Um, his name I can't recall, Sir Something Something. Um, and he used the... <laughs> oh, yes, that's it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> he, he has Alzheimer's, and two years ago he started using this helmet, and he used it for, a few, for three months for 10 minutes a day, and um, reported actually pretty significant improvement in his Alzheimer's symptoms. And two years later now, um, he, I found an article where he was quoted saying that he had thought that by now he'd have to stop writing, but he's still writing. There's been very little progression of his Alzheimer's. And as far as my understanding, he only used it for that brief period, like maybe he was part of the study. I'm not really sure to tell you the truth, the details of that, but I do know that He's still writing, and he hasn't had any progression of um, symptoms since then. Um, current hospital applications of red light. <clears throat> it's being used, um, red light and other frequencies, red light is se seems to be the most common one for killing cancer cells. This is one particular um, type of uh, 
it's a hemoglobin-based uh, drug. I guess it's a drug. It's, it's derived from hemoglobin. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about that. I can later if you want. But, um, and basically what they do is they inject this into the person, and then they shine UV light, um, which then stimulates the cancer cells begin to fluoresce. So then they can go in with um, a light, a flexible endoscope and using red laser light and they shine the light on the cancer cells and the cancer cells die and it's extremely effective. Um, and there's no harm to any other body tissues, it only affects the cancer cells. Um, they've actually been using this for 20 years in China to treat lung cancer and other tumors. Any, anywhere that they can get an endoscope and kind of stick it in your body because again, what I told you about the, the red light doesn't penetrate that deeply so you have to get it right next to the tumor in order for it to be effective. So anywhere like um, that they can do that, like here they're treating prostate cancer um, and again lung cancer, other, any tumor that they can reach or that's close to the surface of the skin. Um, and now there's, a, there's another um, chlorophyll-based um, substance that is doing the same thing. And it's called TUCAD, and it um, started off in Israel. They're now doing second stage clinical, clinical trials in Canada um, that can treat much larger tumors and that are also deeper in the body because they're using infrared for that, for that particular activator. Um, so anyway, it's pretty exciting. I think. Okay, orange. Orange is all about ambition, self-confidence, and sociability. Um, here we see, uh, again, market research is pretty savvy about using color for manipulating people, I guess you may want to call it, <laughs> influencing us. Um, so banks, often use orange in their logos and they'll combine it with blue and you'll see why they use blue in a few minutes. Uh, it's associated with, uh, the color orange is associated with ambition and personal power. It boosts self-confidence. It encourages resourcefulness and creativity. Um, whenever I have little notations here, I'm not going into as much detail as I did with the, the red, but that's <coughs> the references. Five elements or chakra both correspond with that. Um, it makes us sociable, extroverted, and playful. Uh, it's a happy, energetic, and warming color. It's used for relieving depression. So all of these things, I mean, a bank, basically, they want you to give them their money, your money, and they want you to, you know, think, okay, I'm, if I give these guys my money, I'm going to make a lot of money, and it's all, <laughs> it all ties in. Uh, yellow. Yellow increases appetite. It's a cheery color, and it stimulates mental energy. So again, here we see, that's why that's why McDonald's and all the fast food places put yellow with the red. The red gets you to speed up and the yellow makes you hungry so you end up ordering a lot more. Um, it also, yellow also stimulates laughter and happiness and optimism and it stimulates intestines and digestive fluids, aids digestion. Again, all of these are color reasons why they would use it in the fast food industry. It speeds up metabolism. So, it's all about um, appetite and digestion for, for that aspect of it. Another thing that it's also useful for is it stimulates mental energy and creative thoughts. And you see a kind of a practical example. Is it a coincidence that all legal pads are yellow? Um, because you know, if you're, you're, you're staring at the yellow pad and you're writing, you're getting that yellow energy and it's, it's going to give you a lot more um, mental insights and creative thoughts. Green is a balancing color. It's um, calming, gives us clarity. It's actually, if you think again of the, um, the rainbow, when you've got red, orange, yellow, and then green is in the middle, and then you've got blue, indigo, and violet. So the red, orange, yellow, if you look over there, those are all warming, stimulating colors. And then the blue, blue indigo, and violet are all cooling, calming, sedating colors. Green is neutral. It's not warming or cooling or stimulating or sedating. It's in the middle. So as such, it's, a, it's very good. Um, anytime you want to have like a calming, even it, like an evening um, sense. So a lot of spas use it because it, can, it works really well for people that are overly agitated or people that are too lethargic. So if you're too lethargic, you're, it's gonna bring your energy up. If you're too agitated, it's gonna bring your energy down. Um, it's, um, it's the color of nature. It's very good for balance, clear judgment, well-paced energy. Um, it increases compassion. 
in, in our ability to forgive. It's the five elements and the fourth heart chakra from those from that standpoint. Um, gives clarity about our sense of direction in life. I see this a lot when people come to me and they tell me, I'm really feeling drawn to green all of a sudden. And it's, it, it's been pretty consistent that it's usually when they're at a crossroads and they're trying to figure out which direction they want to go into. And they're, so all of a sudden they'll feel drawn to green and they're like, I don't really even like green normally, but everything I see is green. So it's another easy way, bring in some green. It'll help you make, <laughs> make those decisions. Um, it enhances our commitment to personal and spiritual growth. Uh, it brings peace, harmony, renewal, and nurturing. And again, that all ties in with nature. It's the color of nature. Blue is very calming. It instills trust and peace of mind. So blue in uniforms. Why is it that all uniforms seem to be blue? Well, again, scientific studies, the same guys that studied um, when you look at red, studied when you look at blue, what happens in our bodies. Um, Red stimulates the sympathetic nervous system and the fight or flight and gets you moving. Blue does the opposite. It stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. So it slows heart rate, lowers blood pressure, produces chemicals in the body that are very calming. Blue is used in corporate logos uh, and in those bank things. It's associated with steadfastness, dependability, wisdom, and loyalty. So again, you know, in, in a uniform sense, you're, you, if you're a police officer there, you want to have somebody feel that they can trust you, that they can um, depend on you. Same thing with lo um, the corporate logos. These people want you to think that they're going to be around a long time. And the banks, you know, same thing. <coughs> they're, they're very reliable. So they, they want you to, they kind of are working at a subliminal level whenever they're using that color. Uh, summary, um, blue, people have found to be more productive in a blue room. It's cal they're calm and they're focused on the task at hand, able to plan effectively. So a lot of people think that blue makes you sleepy and sedate, but it doesn't. What it does is it just calms you down. It brings your energy down. So it allows you, it, it can help you sleep if you're too agitated. It'll bring your energy down, but it also doesn't n just do, it doesn't make you <sighs> Okay, I'm sleeping now. <laughs> um, it will, it just helps you to remain calm and be able to focus on whatever you're doing. Uh, studies show that weightlifters can lift more weight in a blue gym. Uh, most endurance sports are enhanced in blue surroundings. And again, it's that it kind of like allows you to even out your energy so you can do anything that requires endurance. However, if you are, need quick, quick burst sports are better around red, which is kind of makes sense, right? Um, blue enhances creative and self-expression, um, creative and self-expression, and clear communication. Uh, it gives you the willpower to follow your direction in life. So whereas green will help you make the decision, which, which direction should I go, blue will give you that willpower. Okay, this is where I should go. Now I need to go and actually do it. Um, and as we've seen a couple of times already, blue light treats neo neonatal jaundice. And you've got the blue, the blue light in the hospital version. They also make these devices. You can take your baby home and wrap it in this Billy blanket. Um, and blue light has actually been around, blue light therapy for jaundice has been around since the 1960s. Um, it was actually developed in the 1950s in the UK. And it took 10 years before hospitals started adopting it in, in the United States. It's, there's a really long lag even, and this was, you know, this was after it was published in the, in the medical journals in the UK. So it wasn't like it was just, oh, somebody randomly discovered it. Um, and it was actually discovered by accident because what, a little side story, the, the way that they, they realized that the sunlight was um, um, treating the jaundice, they sent blood, blood samples from a baby that had jaundice to the lab and the lab technician didn't get to them right away and he stuck the samples on the windowsill. And then when he went to test the, the blood samples, he was like, wait, there's no bilirubin in here. I mean, it's like, uh, it was completely converted. And he said, there, this baby doesn't have jaundice. And they're like, yes, this baby does have jaundice. Go look at it, it's all yellow. <laughs> and so they, they tried to figure out what the, what, the different, what the cause was for the blood sample no longer showing any indication of jaundice. And what they realized was that the, sun, the sunlight actually changed it chemically. 
So that's when they so they started using sunlight for blue uh, for treating jaundice, and then they narrowed it down to the specific frequency of blue light. Very similar to how just not that long ago they were using full spectrum light, bright light for treating seasonal affective disorder and delayed sleep phase disorder. And now they know you don't have to have these big huge contraptions. You can have this tiny little just it's just blue light. So it just takes a while um, to figure these things out. Um, and again. The same thing, I like mentioning that. Stick your baby in the sun, it's free. You know, <laughs> it takes a little bit longer. <laughs> um, blue light therapy devices used for acne. There are all kinds of these on the market now. Lots of FDA approved LED devices for treating acne at home. Very effective. You can go on Amazon and read reviews of people. Um, and uh, they're using spe a specific frequency, 410 to 420 nanometers, which kills, the, it actually kills the bacteria that causes the acne. And here you see a before and after picture of this one girl, like after eight weeks, it's pretty remarkable. Um, and all you do is you hold them up to the skin. Uh, Levilon is another, it's a photosensitizing agent, FDA approved, and this is used for some more severe conditions. Um, it's used for treating actinic keratosis, which is um, the precursor to skin cancer. And you can see this guy's pretty, you know, he's got some pretty bad skin damage there. And then after using the combination of blue light and Levulon, this is four weeks after his treatment. So if you stop this early enough, I mean, this is, it will never d turn into cancer. When was Levulon? Is it a form of blue light? No, Levulon is the actual, it's kind of like that photo friend that I showed you. It's a, it's a substance that's developed usually from um, organic substances, and then they use that to put it on the skin, and then they shine blue light on it. So it's the combination. It, the blue light is activating the substance to treat the, whereas, you, whereas in the other cases, the, the home devices for treating acne, it's just blue light. You don't have to put anything on your skin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So is it considered a prescription drug? Levulon, yes, yeah. it would be. Yeah, um, I think I think they're like you can go to a dermatologist. They usually they usually um, have that. Um, is my understanding that it would be a treatment that you would get through your dermatologist. Um, and it's also used for very severe forms of acne, Levulon. But again, you, if you have like extreme severe acne, then you'd probably want to go that right, but route. But um, again, the, the LED at home devices are extremely effective. So um, indigo is a sedating, spiritually uplifting, consciousness expanding and intuitive color. Um, if any of you have ever been to the Rothko Chapel in Houston, you, you can kind of experience that on a larger scale because you're completely surrounded by this really dark indigo. Um, <coughs> And um, um, Rothko, before he died, said, the paintings in a chapel are sort of a window to the beyond. Dark colors go beyond the canvas. And you're definitely looking at the beyond. You're looking at the infinite. Um, and the last color from the spectrum is violet. It's a tranquilizing, meditative, artistic, and visionary color. So it helps you get into those elevated states. So color, light, and art um, are the ultimate natural healing remedies. Uh, we've seen how science is using color, light, and art to heal, which validates, again, these thousands of year old healing practices. And it, you've seen there, there really aren't that many frequencies that they've worked on, that they've experimented with and um, done studies on. So, and we've got all those frequencies in the visible color, the visible light range. So imagine all the applications that science hasn't, science hasn't yet proven. But again, there are these healing modalities that do teach you about these, you know, the things that they're, they're, they can be used for. Um, so you don't have to wait for science to catch up. You can start today, bringing more color into your life to effect physical, emotional, and consciousness, consciousness raising on a daily basis. So here again, si similar to the exercise, how to use color to help yourself. Um, simply pay attention to the colors that you're drawn to. So what colors were you drawn to during this presentation or in the artwork? Um, which colors catch your eye when you're out driving, when you're out and about, when you're shopping, when you're at work, wherever you are? Are there any, just start paying attention to that and see like, oh, today I'm really noticing yellow for some reason, why is that? Um, 
so you can do this exercise again whenever you want. You can go to my website and use the different colors that are in the paintings and just kind of, I've had a number of people that have done that and they find it to be very helpful for kind of like, a, in addition to the, the, the sensations that they get from looking at the artwork even on the screen. Um, and you can figure out what it is where you're, where you're feeling out of balance, which color energies you're naturally drawn to. Um, and we all have certain constitutional types. So some colors will always be, you know, what I like to call our battery recharge colors. And they'll remain the same for years or for always. Um, while others will tend to fluctuate depending on what you've got going on in your life. And so like for me, red is, I'm a pretty high energy person. I, I'm going all the time. I'm reading, I'm thinking, so <laughs> red, red, I have lots of red in my home. And anytime I buy anything like my toaster or my water, you know, a uh, filter or my mouse, I always get red. Um, so, and uh, anyway, and sometimes I want to paint red. I'm not getting enough in my home. I need even more. <laughs> so. Um, and, uh, but again, then other days I'll feel drawn to another color because I'm like, I'm needing some blue or something. Maybe I'm overly agitated. Um, so anyway, and we all have that. We'll have certain colors that we like all the time and we have other ones that will kind of fluctuate. Um, so which, once you know which colors you're drawn to, um, you can reference the descriptions that you saw here today or they're also in my, on my website in even more depth. I've got more, more effects that each of the colors do than I had time to present here today. Um, and then simply use that knowledge to consciously bring more of those colors that you need into your life and home. Um, it, doing so, this very simple thing can bring balance, healing, peace, joy, abundance, and elevated consciousness. It's magic. I know, it's great. Um, and Deepak Chopra, um, <coughs> When you nourish your light body, you resurrect your soul, giving you a life of joy, effortless spontaneity, love, compassion, and peace. You are literally free. To be enlightened means to be in the light, literally. Um, so anyway, I wanted to close on that. And um, it's been a fun journey for me so far with color and consciousness becoming my life's work and passion. And hopefully today I've shared some useful tools and practical ways that you can use color, light, and art to lead healthier, happier, and more conscious lives. And I wanted to leave, leave you with this color red, um, which will energize you and prompt you to action um, with knowledge and fresh perspective. So thank you for coming. And thank you IONS and INAX for asking me to be here today. So if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them now. Okay. <laughs>